In this After Effects tutorial, I'll show you how to animate an abstract loop using the Create Nulls from Path script. Hi, my name is Manuel. I'm a freelance motion designer, bringing you fresh animation and motion graphics tutorials every week. To follow along, you might want to download the project file. Okay, let's dive right in. We're going to use the Create Nulls from Path script, which is built in since After Effects 2018. It's hidden here in Windows, then way down in the menu. I'll leave it here for a moment. The comp is 1920 pixels wide, 1080 pixels high, and 130 frames long. Frame rate doesn't really matter. I've already added some markers for more overview and a background solid. Next, let's add a shape to it by double-clicking on the Rectangle tool. We open up the Path property and set the size. Remember to release this little chain here to 500 by 500 pixels. Let's name it Square. Next, we move to 30 frames and set a keyframe for Scale by pressing S to open the property. Then we add to Solids. Command Y creates the first one, color whatever you like. Command D duplicates it. Let's name them Shape 1 and 2 and position them. Shape 1 in the upper right corner, shape 2 in the lower left corner. To be exact, shape 2, x value 250 pixels and y 1330 pixels. And shape 1, 1670 pixels x and minus 250 pixels y. So this is where we start. Let's use the create nulls from path script now. But first we need to convert the rectangle into a BC path. Then select the path and click on Nulls Follow Paths. I quickly rename them for you guys, it makes it easier to follow along. Using these null objects allows us to animate some crazy stuff. Let's move the two shapes below the square. Here are the four points, which have the exact position of our square corners. Using the parent pick whip, we link shape 1 to null object 1. and shape 2 to null object 3. Let's move to the beginning of our timeline and animate. If you change the scale of the square, the two shapes follow along. Let's set the scale to minus 100 here at the beginning. Then we open the graph editor, make sure the snap icon is activated and edit speed graph is selected. And we slow the beginning and the end of the animation down by forming a speed curve like that. Let's have a look. Awesome. Let's take that one step further. We move to 40 frames in the timeline and set a keyframe for scale and rotation. We split shape 1 and 2 by selecting them and pressing Shift Command D. I want to keep the names though. And now we link the shapes to the other two null objects. Shape 1 to null object 2 and shape 2 to null object 4. Let's move to 60 frames in the timeline and set the rotation of the square to 90 degrees and the scale to 150%. Now the shapes follow the other two corner points. And again we quickly smooth the start and the end of the scale and rotation. Let's see. How cool is that? We move to 70 frames in the timeline, set keyframes for scale and rotation. Then we move on to 96 frames in the timeline and set the scale to minus 50 and the rotation to zero. Oh crazy! We go back to 70 frames, select shape 1 and 2 and again split the layers. Shift Command D is the shortcut. Then link the shapes back to the other two null objects. Shape 1 to null object 1, shape 2 to null object 3. Let's add something more. We open the position properties by pressing P of the two shapes and add two keyframes. Then go to 96 frames again and move shape 2 to the left and shape 1 to the right. Still connected though to two corners. Let's be exact here with the two black shapes. We quickly make that move smooth as well. Let's have another look. Not bad. We move on to 106 frames and set keyframes for scale, rotation and position. 
Then we go to 120 frames and set the scale to minus 100, the rotation to minus 90. And move the two shapes back into the position we started with, to make the loop seamless. Let's be exact again. And quickly changing the speed curve in the graph editor. Alright, this is the basic motion. We should change all keyframes at the beginnings of our little breaks between animations to toggle hold keyframes to make sure nothing strange happens. They hold values without any change until there's a new keyframe. One last thing. Let's add some gradient ramps to make it look a bit nicer. For the square, let's choose a yellow and bright purple. For shape 1, let's take purple and orange and make the gradient diagonal. Then we copy it and simply paste it into the other black shapes. For the background, let's take a dark blue cyan combination. Finally, let's add a drop shadow to the square to add a bit of depth to the loop. Imagine all the possibilities that script offers you. Now it's your turn to play around and do crazy stuff. On the left side I've added some videos you might like, so see you there! Subscribe to my channel on the right side and ring the bell if you want to know exactly when the next video is coming out. Thanks so much for watching, hope that tutorial was useful for you all. See you in the next video, bye!